Hello, I'm Citrus, and you're looking at the Gundam Fixed Figuration Metal Composite Zeta Plus. This 1-100 scale action figure set includes parts for the A1, C1, and Hummingbird configurations, and it came out in March 2009, retailing for 18,000 yen. The first edition of this release included a special display base decorated in the red Zeta Plus paint scheme. Around the same time, and for the same price, a limited edition blue version was also released. The details are a bit fuzzy, but I believe it was a very early Premium Bandai web exclusive. The two versions are identical aside from their paint schemes. And despite the blue one's limited edition status, they both seem to be equally available in the second-hand market today, with no significant price difference between them. At their lowest a few years ago, you could find either version for about $150, but they seem to be slowly creeping up. Checking the usual sources, the best prices at the time of recording are just under $200. Along with the manual, we receive a big sticker sheet. You're meant to apply these markings as you like, but I think the figures come with plenty out of the box. Some minor assembly is required. The parts trays aren't very strong, and they will deform when stored improperly. If you stack your figure boxes, I recommend keeping weight off of these as much as possible. The three layers of trays divide up the figure pretty logically. The top layer contains the A1 and C1 parts, and the middle tray contains the hummingbird parts. But we'll start with the bottom tray first, because it holds all the pieces of the display base, which is easily the weakest aspect of the entire package. Despite the plethora of attachments and configurations, the stand arm can only safely display the figure in an upright position. The arm doesn't articulate very much, so dynamic aerial poses are basically out of the question, even though the figure itself is quite capable. And as we'll see later on, it's not perfect for Wave Rider display either. Anyway, let's put together the A1 first. The printed markings are delicate and will scratch easily. Make sure to handle the figure lightly. Here's the completed A1 compared to a typical 1100 scale Gundam, and the MGS Gundam from the same Gundam Sentinel series. I think these two look pretty good together. Know that this figure is not fully painted. Most of the white areas are bare plastic, and they are prone to yellowing. The Zeta Plus has fairly traditional proportions with a wide chest and a narrow waist. In my hands, the A1 feels a little lighter than expected, but it's not too surprising. The figure is mostly plastic, despite the metal in its name. Like other Zetas, the body is hollow to accommodate their transformation mechanisms. In typical Chagokin fashion, the Zeta Plus features several ratcheting joints, but there isn't a lot for them to hold up. That said, this figure still has loads of posing potential. Altogether, the A1's hybrid construction feels solid, but transforming it into Wave Rider mode reveals an issue.
This is the finished A1 Wave Rider, which looks very handsome. All the fittings are pretty sturdy. On the bottom, we can remove a few panels and put in some landing gear. These parts are all metal, and they're painted very cleanly. The tire detail is well separated from the support structure, and the middle wheels can even roll. Sadly, they don't do much to actually support the Wave Rider. The metal in the legs is too heavy, and there's not enough weight in the front to balance it, so the Wave Rider will always tip backwards, unless you use the ugly included support block. Once in place, the support block is very difficult to remove. I don't like the solution. I think the best thing Bandai could have done was distribute the metal content more evenly in the torso. What's even more upsetting is that the display stand doesn't compensate for the weight problem. The shield is supposed to hook into the forward piece, and the force of the clip behind it is supposed to hold the wave rider in place. But what really happens is everything just tumbles down as soon as I let go. The stand is completely useless for the A1 wave rider. Fortunately, the C1 doesn't suffer as much from the same problem, and we can get there without even transforming back. The key word is as much. If we put on the landing skis and set it down without the support block, the C1 will tip backwards just the same. On the bright side, unlike the A1, the C1 will actually balance on the display stand. Unfortunately, just the slightest jolt will send it rolling off. I don't know, maybe you can tie it down or something. Back in mobile suit mode, the C1 looks basically the same as the A1, with some small exterior differences. Between the two variations, I definitely prefer the C1. The big cannon looks much cooler than the standard beam rifle and shield setup. Even bigger and more impressive, of course, is the Hummingbird. And to get there, we need to take apart the Zeta Plus completely. To save us some time, here's one I prepared earlier. This torso section is the only shared part between the A1, C1, and the Hummingbird. In generously trying to give us everything in one package, Bandai almost gave us two complete figures. If this set came out today, I'm almost certain Bandai would have split it into multiple releases.
and that's the Hummingbird. Lining it up with the MG XS makes for a really awesome display. Considering that it has no feet, using the display stand is essential. The bulky thrusters make posing basically impossible, but the limbs are still properly jointed. Despite their large size, the thrusters are hollow, so the Hummingbird feels about as heavy as the normal Zeta Plus. On the display stand, we can tip the Hummingbird forward slightly to make it look like it's floating through space. This mode is, in my opinion, best viewed from below. The top of a bookcase is a perfect spot to display the Hummingbird, which is really convenient because its massive size is difficult to fit between shelves without cramping the figure or wasting valuable storage space. Folding this mobile suit into its Wave Rider mode is, surprisingly, a lot easier than it is for the normal Zeta Plus. Everything just sort of collapses in, not too many complicated folds at all. And here's a size comparison I've looked forward to for a long time. The Hummingbird Wave Rider next to the G Cruiser. These two gigantic mobile armors look amazing next to each other. I prefer to display this without the wing propellant tanks, which makes for a cleaner look. This time, the stand attachment is, thankfully, very secure. Although the Hummingbird has the floppiest Wave Rider mode of the set, the four thruster pods are properly supported, so we don't have to worry about them falling out of place. Just as with the G Cruiser, the Hummingbird is mostly hollow as well. In any case, displaying the Hummingbird is a challenge due to its immense length. It'll fit on most shelves long ways, but the obtrusive support blocks kind of spoil the looks. I think the Wave Rider is best viewed from slightly above, so setting it on a shelf just below eye level would probably be ideal. On the surface, the Metal Composite Zeta Plus set seems like an incredible value, even though its aftermarket prices are slowly ballooning. For a small premium above the metal robot spirits, we get the same mobile suit in a larger scale, with tons of accessories and the hummingbird parts. I'm astounded that the retail price difference between these two figures is only 3,000 yen. Given that the only alternative is the gummy mess of the 1144 scale fixed figuration release from 2003, this set is easily the best rendition of the hummingbird as well, even though the core Zeta Plus is flimsier than the metal robot spirits. That said, being the only acceptable option is never the best reason to buy anything. The overwhelming problem with the Metal Composite Zeta Plus is its Katoki factor, which, before the new Verka in 2012, meant something completely different. There are lots of good ideas here, but not a lot of good execution. For starters, the entire design concept of this release seems to have its priorities out of order. The positions of the ratcheting joints don't make sense, the stand is completely useless for two out of its six display modes, the set includes a bunch of tiny landing gear that can't support the Wave Rider, but not something expressive like open hands. It's a shame that a lot of these pain points were non-existent in a model kit released 6 years prior for one-fifth the price. I hate to end this review on such a downer, but it's important to recognize this figure's flaws, especially if you're thinking about hunting one down. For something so expensive, going into the purchase with realistic expectations will prevent a lot of disappointment and buyer's remorse down the line. Even with all its problems and prices harboring around $200, the Metal Composite Zeta Plus still delivers tremendous value to the right kind of collector. The paint quality and detailing still hold up, and the tremendous number of display options absolutely trumps modern releases. Of course, if Bandai ever decides to give us a Master Grade Zeta Plus Hummingbird, a la the Master Grade XS version 1.5, that would be my absolute top pick. It'll probably cost something ridiculous like 10,000 yen, but you know me, I prefer model kits to action figures any day. That's all for this review, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.